Welcome to the Scale Up Valley podcast, where we bring the best of the best to help you scale your business from 1 million to 1 trillion. Today's guest is a very special one. His name is Agapito Gonzalez, the Chief Customer Officer at Force Manager. Agapito, welcome to the show. Uh, it's my pleasure, Mike. Thank you very much for inviting me. Just a, a quick disclosure, uh, we have worked together uh, in, in the past. It was uh, a huge privilege to have the opportunity to work with you, Agapito. And, uh, and of course, we keep exchanging a lot of lessons about scaling up that we will share some of you, uh, some of them today with you, um, with, uh, with Agapito in, in first person. So Agapito, let's present yourself to, to the community. Let us know a little bit more about uh, yourself. Thank you, Mike. Well, um, as you said, I'm, um, and I'm working as a Chief Customer Officer at Force Manager, the leading mobile CRM, by the way, based in Barcelona. Well, um, I'm an engineer. Uh, I started working some years ago. And um, well, I learned some lesson from every, every step I, I, did, I made in, in the past. I started basically as a, as project manager while well, I was an engineer, then project manager where I, where I learned uh, how to make, uh, how to get stuff done, right? As a project manager, how to, how to get stuff done by me and by others. That is a good lesson for, for my future. Project management is a good, it's is a, is a nice discipline. Then um, uh, I move as uh, sales and marketing director. Uh, it's, a, it's a strange step, but uh, well, not to make the, the story long. Um, and then, um, then uh, as a sales director, I learn how to sell ideas. I think selling and marketing is a pretty humanistic uh, discipline. Uh, uh, it's a bit something between psychology and communication, and it's pretty humanistic. It's, it's, it's something interesting. So then I learned how to sell ideas in general, not just product or services. Um, later on, I um, I was um, 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 working as a global operations manager mm -hmm. for a big company. Uh, in uh, so I was running operation for thousand cast a thousand consultants in forty countries. So pretty, pretty large team. Absolutely. <laughs> but at, at that time, I just had three direct reports, three persons. So mm -hmm. then I have to develop my skills as, as influencing others to do what I, <laughs> I design. So selling ideas again, selling ideas and being pathetic. And um, well, after that uh, experience, I put everything together. And I joined this, uh, this uh, fantastic uh, uh, project that is called Force Managers. So a different scale it's as uh, in a smaller team, I just putting all the ingredients together for, for, this, for trying to help scaling up Force Manager. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an amazing career. And I always get surprised by uh, your experiences and they help a lot in a, in the daily basis. And uh, as, I had, as I said, I had the, the luxury of working with you and it was always good to be able to explore some of those experiences to prepare the future and, uh, and the present. So and let's let the, the community also know a little bit more about force manager. What is the stage of growth where force manager is? So if you can share uh, some additional details on, on where we are and where are we going, uh, that would be great. Absolutely, thank you. So uh, first manager uh, um, was born as, 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 as a startup co uh, company in Barcelona. Uh, it's a vendor of a CRM, a pure SaaS uh, a vendor, uh, on mobile, uh, cloud, etc. And then uh, this company uh, growth a lot in, in the last crisis. So something that our CEO says many times, so we grow to help customers to get out of the crisis. So maybe now we have uh, a new opportunity. 
because uh, well, one good strategy to get out of the crisis, the crisis is to sell more, and the CRM is a tool to sell more if if it's uh, uh, well uh, used. Uh, well, uh, our tagline, also our our vision today, is uh, to make a high performance sales team with our uh, product CRM. So we just we we are not selling just a product. We sell a solution that comes with uh, with technology, but also comes with uh, processes and with a lot of stuff for for um, training the people who is going to use it. Nice user interface, just with the objective of making these guys successful, selling more for the managers of the teams of the sales reps to be in control and it's just pure light to the point. Just get force manager and then you will sell more. That's our our it sounds, a, it sounds a nice uh, value proposition and nowadays very very helpful to to keep leveraging the digital transformation stage or the, the speed of the digital transformation stage uh, that we see with uh, this this pandemic. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we absolutely think so. And uh, many customers uh, are uh, trusting on us on this on this uh, uh, journey. Well done, Agapito. So we always discuss three critical ingredients to scale uh, in the show, though you are more than welcome to challenge those ingredients and to add new ones, Agapito. And just to uh, repeat them for the ones who have been following us or for the ones who are listening to us for the first time, Number one, radical focus. Number two, world-class leadership slash team slash culture. I keep adding new layers to that. Uh, and number three, a culture of execution. So starting with number one, radical focus, you know this is one of my uh, favorites. Um, so there is this huge, huge tent temptation to kind of try to be everything to everyone, especially when we need to have a huge total addressable market and we want to sell the vision to the investors and even sometimes for the customers and for the employees that uh, the market is huge. But that's true and we need to conquer that huge mark niche by niche. And, um, and we need to double down on what is already working uh, instead of reinventing the wheel again and again and again. So we also had a lot of discussions about having the customers happy and again, doubling down on the ones who are having a better fit. And uh, as, 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 as the audience will also get to know, we, we, all, we are completely obsessed about uh, net revenue retention, which is some, something very important for, for your role as well as, as the chief customer officer of uh, force manager. But this is kind of an overview about the radical focus ingredients and the idea would be that you would share some, some ideas and some lessons learned and at, at force management and your previous roles uh, to help the community that are listening to, to keep scaling with your experience, Agapit. Yeah, sure. So I, I, I've, I've looked up that you have uh, now produced um, more than 150 episodes, so probably many many things have been uh, exactly. far, but I will give you my my point of view. So you know when you describe so uh, when you describe the huge opportunity that is out there in the market. Okay, if we talk, if we think about companies like Force Manager or companies that are targeting this 10 million euros ARR or even 100 euros. Every niche is huge. Mm -hmm. So if we work, uh, if we try to, we give an offer to the whole world, now that you can sell everywhere in the world, every little niche is millions of opportunities. That's the first idea. You know that from my time as sales director, I know what optimist, uh, what uh, opportunistic mean for a sales rep. You know that you have, you have a target, you have to do your uh, monthly target, quarterly target, and you see opportunities everywhere. And then you think that that new thing that just appeared 
you can replicate many times and you try to sell to the company, to your company that uh, it, it's, it's not just this deal, it's many that comes along. So then you have to help your sales um, teams to, to, to explain that, uh, well, uh, this is just a, a deal for today, but they will not make the target, the, the pull your target based on that opportunistic things, no, right? So then um, radical, fo radical focus starts by convincing the sales reps, your selling team, that this is the way to be successful. You know, even um, when you sell something like first manager that comes from with a uh, project services around and services can be complex, uh, so complexity goes against the scaling up, you know? So if you are radical focus, you can industrialize, you can explain to the customers what is going to happen every time the same. Uh, this is just word of mouth more and more and more and more. Um, and then uh, from, from the uh, business point of view, uh, you know that uh, the time is money, Anytime you spend thinking in new things, you are not putting this time in making the things that you started just uh, scaling up. And I think that's a big mistake. And we have seen this many times. So the thing is that when it when this new opportunity comes along and it's radically different of what you thought, it's better to say, okay, let's... Uh, Let's think on that. Um, if you want a, a piece of advice around this, what I what I try to do when it, this uh, situation comes is, okay, if someone wants to propose a new business or a new line of business, the thing is, okay, if we try this, can you define the success criteria? And what is your commitment in number of sales in three months time, six months time? If you challenge the people who propose these new deals with what is your commitment in money on time, many times this opportunity just fried out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good tip to how to uh, face those uh, proposals in a in a nice way. <laughs> but if they have if they have the the answer and there's a lot of money behind, well, that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that's a good one to have the courage of say no, and I think that you brought uh, an amazing point. Uh, I love that quote of Leonardo da Vinci: "Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication." Right? It's it's so so hard to subtract. It's so so hard to keep the main thing, the main thing, as, as Stephen Covey uh, would tell. Um, and yeah, this is and I I like you you. You also talked about this. Sometimes it's boring, but uh, but it pays off, right? <laughs> in, in in the short, mid, and 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 long term. And you also talked about the second point. I think it's critical, which is about creating a machine. And to create a machine, uh, it's it's really really important the repetition. So it doesn't need to be just a deal, uh, an opportunistic deal it needs to be a deal done in exactly the same process with the same kind of target, with the same kind of pains, with the same kind of solutions. So we got uh, completely experts and masters uh, at that kind of client, at that kind of process, that kind of need. So we already know what will happen in the entire sales process, what will be the pain, what will be the solution and how to deal with every single objection. Yeah, and then the challenge to the, to the uh, lead generation machine or the marketing team or whoever is, can you please find someone, another one who is interested in this message? Okay. Okay. So many times when you see this um, unfocused uh, deals, whatever, the problem comes from the lead generation machine because if there's, if, 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 you know, the, if the pipeline is dry or there's no, uh, repetitive lead generation machine, you have to you have to sell, right? So then you see opportunities wherever in any <laughs> uh, it comes to you because there's no many. So 
probably the, the solution for this problem is is more in 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 working in regeneration than any other thing. Yeah. But that's a very good point, also that we keep repeating uh, here again and again and again that it's really important to think about the system as revenue and having uh, marketing, sales, products, uh, CS, all together around the same table with common goals, common objectives, and having the company OKRs at the top, right? It's, it's really, and that's why NRR and also the acquisition uh, metrics are, are so important because those are metrics that everyone can contribute to to make the company uh, successful. Yeah, no, that's the, the true. And then imagine that you have a sales rep and then you have you want to make your target. Hopefully you have an, an industrial machine just selling uh, all day long the same thing. So why not? Maybe it's boring, I don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it works. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Great. And um, let's, let's move into the number two, the world-class team slash leadership slash uh, culture. Uh, something that uh, I'd like to say that it's, it's really important to have the right people on the right seats for each stage of growth. And nowadays, I would even add to that, that it's even more important to make them to work as just one team uh, with a common purpose, vision, narrative, objectives, uh, and really a win-win relationship across the team. That That's what makes uh, very special teams and tough moments always come in, in this scaling up uh, paths and that's only the world class teams who stay together and face the, the challenges together. What would you say about that? Well, that's a, a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's the, most that's the most critical thing and the most difficult one because we, we are talking about humans, human beings, and uh, um, I think the, the, the key word for making such a team is trust, is personal and human trust in the team. And that's uh, difficult because there are different personalities, people that come from different, uh, different uh, places. And um, probably, um, sometimes it's people with different interests in the in the job. I mean, the the typical in I mean in a company like force manager, the typical thing in, in software is is you know the uh, the border between sales and operations, right? So uh, you know if some something goes wrong is because uh, operation says is is not well uh, sold, and then the other says well, okay. Uh, that's the market. Um, it's very easy. So, I mean, Mike, uh, I was thinking about this question. It's not a surprise for me. <laughs> Your question and then how to make trust. Uh, if we agree that trust is uh, is the magic word, that's why. I mean, how to make trust, right? So that's to make trust. That is why there are offsite meetings. Then we go for a dinner. Uh, we 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 have coffee, uh, all these kind of things. So we expect that uh, in these inter interactions, the trust just come um, alone, uh, and that's not always true. Mm -hmm. um, how to make how to build trust? Um, you know, um, for me, I can give you my point of view. A couple of tips here. Um, I think um, the the leader, the leader, the CEO or the, the leader of the team has to be very strict on some of the rules to manage the team, right? For instance, mm -hmm. never allow finger pointing or, or allowing that someone explain their uh, underachievement because the fault of, of some, someone else. Everyone has to be accountable if the, 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 the team is mature enough, is accountable for their own, research, own results. Um, if 
Uh, I depend on on a colleague for making my results. I have to to say it very well in advance, saying, okay, to make my target, I have the condition that this person, this person, or this function needs to help me in A, B, C, D. But well in advance, I cannot explain my failure because the others and 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 of course I cannot explain. I'm private without the other person what, exactly. explaining my failure because someone was not doing uh, wherever. Then th this is from the, uh, my, in my, in my experience from the leadership, from the leader of the, uh, has to put the, the I mean, uh, this person has to put the, the rules on the table, right? And then another way to build trust is to to fully understand the motivations of the others, right? For instance, for me, in my position today, it's pretty easy to uh, to connect with the sales director because I've been sales director for many years. Uh -huh. So I know that pressure of selling, that is the day by day that you have to, you go to a pipeline review and you have to explain something. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Uh, then I can understand the other person and then try, then I can make this connection. In, in a, you know, um, for instance, another trick to, to build this trust is what happened when I became a sales director, by the way. I was working in operations, in professional services at that time. And we had, at that time, uh, the CEO puts a, a rule in the companies that the management should switch functions every now and then. It's a little bit crazy, right? So, you know, I was very, I was very, you know, uh, stubborn in saying, oh, if um, salespeople has to do this, the sales director has to do that, uh, and then and the things in sales and marketing should be uh, that way. And one day, the CEO came to my office and said, "Okay, now you have the opportunity to turn this around." You are the new sales director. <laughs> <Well, you're... laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah, it's and uh, sometimes it works. I mean, um, but then yeah, it, it, this is an analogy to just to think that it's important to to be empathetic, so to understand the motivation from your colleagues that are many times different from you from from yours. And then the, I mean, the CEO the, or, or the, the HR department has to put these ingredients to try to build trust, understanding the, the other. And this is how I think a good lead, a leadership uh, team can, can work. And, uh, and ultimately it's uh, about uh, sharing, um, sharing targets and all this kind of stuff. But I think trust, if there's no trust, uh, Mike, I think it's just it, it will not work. Not 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 yeah. the, the company will not work. It's just you know it's just pushing in different directions. It just it's better to know it very very early, and put some solution on on the table. But if there's no trust, it will just not work. It's okay. my view. That, that's a very good point also because when tough issues come to our plate and when scaling up, they always come, or even without scaling up in any single company, any single team, uh, tough moments come anyway, that's part of life. Uh, someone was saying life is and business is expansion and contraction, so moments of challenge will always come. It's just a question uh, of, of time. And uh, and it's it's really really uh, important to have those um, conversations of radical can candor and and being able to talk about the truth and to have people on the table feel free to talk about the issues without feeling that they are attacking each other. So it's it's a common problem we are talking about the reality and as quickly as possible as we start talking about the reality the the sooner we can change that reality so if we don't want to accept and speak about the elephant in the room we can't change that reality and what will happen is a lot of 
talk, small talk outside of the meeting on the back of people. And this will create even more complexity to, to make the team work um, as a team. So one of the big temptations of a leader that we see, and there is an amazing book for the ones who are following that I really recommend, which is The Five Temptations of the CEO um, from Patrick Lencioni, is to never talk with a member of your team about another member of your team. So hire a coach, talk with a friend, talk to a peer, talk to an accountability partner, but never talk about a member of your team with another member of other team. You'd say this is crazy, but I see this happening again and again and again, and this kills trust uh, across um, the team. The thing that you, you talk about trust, I, I think that's amazing. Also the rules to create the rules and to be able to team to just to articulate and write it down. I think that's that's a great tip. And and for this, if you have amazing members on each seat of a leadership team who could be the CEOs easily themselves, you have a great leadership team. If if you even add to that that those C level executives or those VPs could understand what are the issues that each of the peers are facing, as you said, because some of them have even have been on those positions before on their careers. This, this kind of speeds up the process of building trust and being on the same page. Uh, I think that that's a great uh, contribution that you have made, uh, Agapito. So with further ado, let's, let's move into number three, a culture of execution, or as I like to call the operating system of the organization, the rituals, uh, routine sets you free. And so what are some of the, of the rituals that are helping you to, um, to scale with your teams? That's also a good one. I mean, for a, for a company like, like first manager again, so um, th that's difficult when you want to scale up. So from certain levels. So this is the, I think this is one of the difference between being a, just a startup doing everything, uh, a bunch of people doing anything to be really in the path of scaling up. Uh, that's, I mean, uh, that's critical. It's, the question here is that um, uh, these cadences many times are boring. Then you have to, <laughs> you have to accept this in, in the beginning, but it's very rewarding. Um, if there's no reason, I mean, based on you know a good design of processing and this is what i learned being a, a global operations director right in, in a company um a, let, let, let me rephrase this so uh, designing processes and operations right you uh one decided that a step or a process or cadence was critical to the business unless you decide again that this is for nothing, or this idea is not going to work anymore, you have to keep these cadences forever. So you don't have to take it this out until you again think that is not worth enough. This is the first uh, idea. Then the second is that if you, work, you want your team working in a rhythm, in a cadence that makes the machine going on, you have to lead by example. That's very important. So imagine that I I really think and, and I do that uh, cadences, rhythms are critical to make the the, the 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 business go on. I have to put the cadences with my team and never never miss anyone. Never ever, right? And then. Uh, if you lead by example, everyone knows that every Tuesday is going to happen this. Every first uh, Thursday of the month is happening that. And then they have to, the team has to release or deliver whatever stuff, a report, a management report, whatever. And then with this rhythm, just this is like the engine of the, of the business. It's like an engine of a car, you know? Like that. Um, because if not, if you don't do this, if you decide to change things, the you know the, the cadence or the things every two weeks, this is just a distraction. 
and sometimes you know in you know in the in the step of being as a, a startup to be something else i mean I have to remember to everyone that okay designing things changing things using new technologies these new technologies is better let's do it by video let's do this and that sounds a great idea but did this put the brakes on the machine so it's just a distraction what i have to do today so uh what someone asked me to do because i have a spreadsheet a powerpoint i fill this in I put this my comments uh, in 10 minutes. And now I need two hours to understand this thing, you know? And then, and what? I've, I've watched that movie. <laughs> and uh, for instance, I mean, the the uh, pipeline follow up or the utilization for for professional services teams, you know, the key, the, the key uh, OKRs or KPIs of the business must be follow up, you know, in a rhythm. Uh, uh, I mean, lately, right? So in an example of first manager, uh, we were following uh, three KPIs last year. One is was the number of tickets in support of one kind. The other one is time to value for projects go live time. We just started measuring these KPIs in the month one in, in in May, one in July, and I have the graph. They started high and they just went down every single time. You know, it's always the same. You put a KPI and you put a cadence that is uh, weekly in that case and weekly for, for support and monthly for projects. And I can show you the graphs. All the graphs, all the KPIs go in the direction you want because uh, everyone knows that we are going to look at this every single week so everyone takes takes care um i mean without cadence uh there's no thing happens <laughs> no engine i mean it's there's, there's no 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 engine. no accountability no positive peer pressure right to to show up to the team and say, look, we are getting better and we have done this progress. Or even we, we didn't make any much progress this week because we faced this challenge. So how can we solve this together? Right? And, uh, and you know, um, so in, in the in the uh, scenario of uh, scaling up, you know, that is your, uh, uh, what we talk about, you know, there is a limit of, you know, there's a study that says this and uh, their books, and, and you explain me this very well. Uh, it's a limit of 100 people, 150 people doing things in a chaotic way, right? So there is a stage in us, in us startups that that works because that gives you speed. But there's a limit where if you don't put this order, nothing happens. It's just, uh, uh, you know, a negative spiral thing. Exactly. And it comes, I think, from uh, theory of network theories. I'm an engineer, and, and for sure there should be a, a, a yeah. scientific explanation of this. There is a Denver number. Uh, the Denver number is that we are only able to establish relationships with uh, a limit of 150 people. Uh, and when we go up from 150, we that's what we call acquaintances. So that's you. You can't have a regular relationship uh, no more. And uh, and then it's kind of people that you are able to recognize from some place. You don't. Sometimes you even know don't know how to explain who is that person, what is the name, what they do. We, you just have seen that person before. You know that. So that's that's the Denver number at one hundred and fifty. That that's the limit. That makes sense. And then, and then if you put some cadence as a rhythm a process, then you just can go up this threshold or limit, and then you can scale up freely. Because that, that's the, the typical secret of having teams of five to seven. So if you have five to seven direct reports and everything is kind of a circle of teams, so you can grow exponentially because you can grow the circle. So 
your main bottleneck as a leader is the number of leaders that you are able to attract and retain uh, across the organization because you need the leaders to to lead those cells and if you have amazing leaders to lead those cells and that are able to create new leaders to lead new cells and if you keep the order if you keep the vision the purpose the culture the values everything together you are able to to scale if you don't have those leaders that world-class team that world-class leadership with the rhythms with the OS the operating system and with the revenue machine uh, there is it is not possible to to scale and of course you, you cannot never go uh, above the the uh, direct reports that the greatest leader in the history had you know who was that no that's 12 direct reports is the limit is the direct report that Jesus Christ had. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a great one. I never thought about it. Thank you for bringing it up. That, that this one. That one is big innovation. Uh, Agamid, <laughs> you were able to surprise us after 170 plus uh, episodes so far. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, uh, it, it, this is a good uh, uh, analogy, yeah. Amazing, so, and to, um, is there anything that we should have discussed uh, that we didn't have an opportunity to discuss in order to scale up? Well, no, I think uh, we discussed everything. Um, um, I mean, uh, the, I think finally the, the key is the simplicity, right? So, uh, as you said, uh, simplicity comes from uh, making something complex in different iteration, make it simple. So making something simple is not easy. But is but is the is the answer, and of course, I mean the the leadership team is is I mean I think this is a difficult one, but then you have to to put a lot of attention in this and and and, and uh, put a lot of time in in making that that team working together. I think that we have discussed many things. Absolutely, that's a great one, and we came we come to the last question of the show and one of my favorites. So if you would have the opportunity to meet Agapito at the beginning of your career, what advice would you offer to your younger self? Yeah, I mean, well, um, you know what, when you're, when you're younger and you have a lot of energy and you have a clear idea, sometimes you, you tend to just go ahead, think that you, you know everything. I mean, the advice for my younger Agapito in this case, it would be, uh, maybe listen more to intelligent people, <laughs> whoever they are. It can be, I mean, uh, a junior consultant, someone who is uh, even an assistant, uh, your boss, whoever who is intelligent and and is and can give you the gift of explaining their point of view. I mean, you have to listen because sometimes. You think that there, something is very clear, and it is not. And and taking another point of, be, uh, of view from an intelligent person is always always healthy and rewarding. It will be the advice to my younger uh, <laughs> myself. That's great, Agapito. Thank you so much for making the time and for sharing your experience with us. You are always welcome to the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting Mike. Thank you very much. Perfect. And to our community, we keep bringing you the best of the best to help you scale our business from 1 million to 1 trillion. See you soon and keep scaling.